Good Monday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's stories, let's take a look outside our weather window. And it was another cool one, well below normal for high temperatures once again. We did see a mixture of clouds and sun out there. But boy, it was just one of those cool days with not much of a breeze out there. A air stagnation advisory did expire this afternoon because we have a storm system moving in. And that means overnight tonight we could start seeing light snowfall and then maybe even some freezing rain tomorrow. We do have a winter weather advisory for all of north central Washington from 7 a.m. tomorrow until 10 p.m. tomorrow night. We could see a tenth or two of ice from that freezing rain and we'll talk much more about that coming up a little bit later on. And now a few of the news stories we're following for you tonight. A report of kids riding their bikes on frozen sections of Moses Lake on Sunday prom prompted the Grant County Sheriff's Office to issue a warning about how bad an idea that is. Governor Jay Inslee is back from the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Egypt and dozens of people turned out for Friday night's Night in a Box event, donating money and resources toward homeless relief. But first, our top story tonight, a Douglas County judge has thrown out a lawsuit brought by former Confluence Health staffers who say the health system's demand that they be vaccinated for COVID was discriminatory. 92 former employees who refused vaccination claim that the policy, which enforced emergency rules imposed by Governor Jay Inslee, violated their, their constitutional rights. On Friday, Judge Brian Huber dismissed their lawsuit with prejudice, saying they failed to establish a legal basis for their claims. Huber said the plaintiffs, represented by former East Wenatchee Mayor Steve Lacey, didn't clearly show they'd suffered discrimination on the basis of disability or religious beliefs. The vaccine mandate was the subject of multiple protests at Confluence Health facilities. The ex-employees may still choose to appeal that ruling. Well, a report of kids riding their bikes on frozen sections of Moses Lake yesterday prompted the Grant County Sheriff's Office to issue a warning about how bad an idea that is. The Sheriff's Office said the kids were extremely lucky. They didn't fall through as the thickness of the ice is extremely difficult to judge. The office warned people against walking, ice fishing, skating, sledding, or taking any vehicles onto the lake saying if the ice gives way, there is a serious risk of hypothermia and even drowning. Well, Governor Jay Inslee is back from the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Egypt. While attending the gathering on Thursday, the governor committed the state to the Beyond Oil and Gas Alliance. That's a signatory group that's committed to phasing out oil and gas production. Inslee told the group Washington's membership in the BOGA is symbolic but meaningful. I think it's a proper question to ask, why is it of value to this group for a state that does not produce any oil or gas to basically make a commitment that we're not going to drill for more oil and gas. And the reason is this. It is because we are accepting our moral responsibility to eliminate the need and the demand for oil and gas down to zero over the next several decades. That is a commitment we are making. It is a necessary one. And we are accomplishing it in multiple ways. We are accomplishing it by being able to tell you this, that we're proud to that after 2035, you will not see more gas or diesel uh, passenger vehicles in my state. That's the law of the state of Washington. We're going to accomplish that. I want to thank everybody for your um, assistance around the world to make that a worldwide policy. As we head to break, dozens of people turned out for Friday's Night in a Box event, donating money and resources toward homeless relief and signing up to sleep out in the cold in solidarity. Organizer Sean Arrington with Lighthouse Christian Ministries said 38 people agreed to sleep in temporary shelter at the Wenatchee Save Mart parking lot. The event returned with an expanded format in a new location after three years of the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Night in a Box is designed not just to raise funds for Lighthouse's homeless outreach, but also to raise awareness of the circumstances people can face when living without shelter. Well, when we come back, the U.S. Forest Service has begun selling permits for people who want to venture into the forest for their Christmas tree this year. As part of its ribbon-cutting ceremonies for the new Wenatchee City Hall last week, the former federal building put on a light show of sorts with a changing assortment of colors lighting that building. Members of the public got an early view inside the new Chelan County PUD headquarters on Friday. And if you're doing some holiday shopping in downtown Wenatchee this Saturday, there's a good chance you'll cross paths with some royalty. I'm Grant Olson, and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Introducing Alpine Airman, because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. Now, am I looking into this camera, or am I looking, where am I looking? We're going to have you just look at it. The holiday season is coming, and Santa's making his 15-second commercial for NCW Life Channel. Are you? Ho, 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 ho. Welcome back. In another news, the U.S. Forest Service has begun selling permits for people who want to venture into the forest for their Christmas tree this year. The permits are $5 each and available online at recreation.gov or in person at Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest offices or at Hooked on Toys, Arberg's, Arberg Sports and Stan's Mary Mart in Wenatchee. The Forest Service's Every Kid program offers free permits to all fourth graders at everykidoutdoors.gov. The Forest Service advises anyone heading into the forest to be prepared with maps, warm clothing, food, and proper equipment. Christmas tree cutters should also advise a friend or family member of where you'll be going and when you expect to return. As part of its ribbon-cutting ceremonies for the new Wenatchee City Hall last week, the former federal building put on a light show of sorts with a changing assortment of colors lighting the building. City Facilities Manager Elisa Schaefer said there's still work to be completed on the lighting system, but eventually it will be put to use during holidays and special occasions. She said nonprofits can request an event color that will be illuminated from sunset to 10 p.m. Schaefer said the lights can even be put to use during daytime hours for special events. She said the LED lights allow a spectrum of colors that is almost infinite. Well, members of the public got an early view inside the new Chelan County PUD headquarters on Friday. The utility district offered hard hat tours to visitors who signed up in advance, showing off the interior of the new all-purpose service center in Old Station. The new complex of buildings will replace the PUD's administrative offices downtown, as well as its Holly Street Maintenance Center. The service center will cost an estimated $164 million to complete, and it's due to open in three phases next year. The transition into the new dig should be completed by December of 2023. Well, if you're doing some holiday shopping in downtown Wenatchee this Saturday, there's a good chance you'll cross paths with some royalty. 
for, for Small Business Saturday, there will be a pageant winners from several organizations visiting Wenatchee Downtown Association businesses. That'll be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. That includes Miss Washington, Miss America's Outstanding Teen, Miss Puget Sound, Miss Olympics, and Miss East Cascades. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Camp Seneca, nestled on the beautiful shores of Lake Wenatchee, has provided children grades 1 through 12 with the ideal location for kids to learn new skills, have fun, and make friends while creating memories that will last a lifetime. Camp Seneca's rustic log cabins and their staff serve to provide each group a unique summer camp experience. Register for Camp Seneca today, www.campfirencw.org. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. In tonight's feature story, the City of Wenatchee has its budget set for 2023. Passing the $142 million spending package was the key action in the first City Council meeting Thursday in its new chambers, which have been under renovation since 2018. Under the new package, the City's Human Resources and Finance Departments will each add one full-time staffer. Our total budget is 142 million in appropriations, and um, this is uh, what is required for us to adopt a budget by the end of the year. And I can guarantee you, at some point next year, we will be amending it as well. Um, but yes, if you have any any questions that we haven't already uh, answered at previous meetings. I'm, I'm still just going to throw my two cents worth out on our HR position. Um, still kind of concerned about having a third position without really knowing that full workload. Um, I work for a company that has uh, thousands of people global, globally, and we have two people that manage the United States with a manager that is worldwide. So without knowing more about what it is our HR department actually has to do on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm having a hard time with that decision. We finally have coverage. You know, we've got some folks that are in and out, and it's nice to have coverage in that office. So, um, you know, I, I think when the Finance Committee met, we, we make all these decisions um, and we take them seriously, and this is one that I think is not only important for that particular group, but I think it's important for the city as well. And so um, that's sort of why I got through finance. And um, I'll get you a copy of her job description. I know we've got that on, online and some of that stuff, so you would have a better idea. Yeah, of and, and, I guess, and I guess I'm okay approving it for now, but what I would like to see is what that actual workload is and a, and a better idea of, okay. of what's happening in that department. Perfect. All those in favor of the uh, motion uh, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Time now to take a look at your North Central Washington weather forecast. Hope your weekend was a good one and your Monday as well. Weather really didn't change Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. It was below normal and unseasonably cool. And it just looks kind of chilly out there as we take a look at Wenatchee from late this afternoon. 34 
Our unofficial high temperature this afternoon, that's 7 degrees below where we should be at 41 this time of year. Our record high, 56, and that was set back in 1965. We started off at 24 this morning, 30 is our normal low temperature. Our record, 7 degrees, and that was set back in 1985. Sunrise, 714 this morning, and sunset this afternoon at 419. Taking a look at your Tuesday temperatures, I wish I could tell you it's going to warm up. In fact, we might be just a tad bit cooler tomorrow. In fact, the freezing mark, a very popular temperature for our Tuesday. Moses Lake, Afreda, Quincy, Wenatchee, and all the way up into Omac. All of us will see about 32 degrees for our high temperature tomorrow. 30 in Leavenworth and 26, so a little cooler in our higher elevations for you folks in Lake Wenatchee. Tonight, we can expect increasing clouds, this trough of low pressure, and here's our frontal boundary will begin to make its way in, and you can see some clouds into the northwestern part of the state. We'll be mostly clear here, so that's chilly with the lows in the mid-20s, and then for Tuesday, winter weather advisory in place. We could see some breezy conditions along the uh, front range of the Cascades, and Yes, a mixture of snow and rain, freezing rain, and that could make for some very icy conditions tomorrow. Be awfully careful if you are driving around tomorrow. A little quieter for your travel day on Wednesday. Mostly cloudy, much warmer as we begin to see a southwesterly flow of air. We'll see high temperatures, low to mid 40s for Wednesday. Thanksgiving, a bit of fog in the morning and then partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. High temperatures for your Thursday. Not too bad. Temperatures in the low 40s. Getting into the end of the week on Friday. Many of you traveling on Friday as well and it looks pretty Pretty good, mostly cloudy, just a little bit of rain in the northwest corner of Washington. High temperatures for the end of the week for Black Friday into the mid 40s, so that will feel nice. And then on Saturday, not a great day to travel unless you're doing it early in the day. Most of the precipitation will be in western Washington Saturday as this next area of low pressure moves through. And then by Saturday evening, rain and snow likely right here in north central Washington. That means about a 50% percent chance for leftover. I think mainly rain as we get into Sunday, mainly because we will see some fairly mild temperatures into the low 40s. Let's take a look now at that seven day forecast and it's brought to us by Apple Valley Honda. Tonight it's going to get cold once again. Low temperatures in the Wenatchee area 25 overnight, 32 rain and snow likely. Remember, Winter weather advisory all day tomorrow, so you could see some icy roadways out there. And then look, we jump up 11 degrees from Tuesday into Wednesday, and pretty nice temperatures right through Thanksgiving, 42 with a little bit of fog early in the day Thursday. And then for our holiday weekend, it's going to get wet once again. Nice travel day for Friday and 44 degrees. As we get into Saturday, mostly cloudy. By the time we get into Saturday night, we will see a pretty decent change chance for rain and snow with temperatures about 42 for our high and finishing up our forecast on Sunday gonna stay on the wet side cloudy skies a 50% chance for rain maybe a rain snow mix with highs on Sunday right around 41 degrees and that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW life evening news continues right after this I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication-free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Hi, I'm Eric Grandstrom. And I'm Brent Rhodes with the NCW Community Toy Drive presented by Les Schwab. Be sure to join us Saturday, November 26th at Hooked on Toys for our Toy Drive kickoff. I'll be there broadcasting live on Country 1047 KKRV starting at 9. And we'll be live on NCW Live Channel from 10 to 11. Find out more about the organizations that serve needy kids here in North Central Washington. And help us kick off the Toy Drive this year to make sure everyone has a better Christmas. See you Saturday at Hooked on Toys. And happy holidays. And now, it's a sports update 
on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Monday to you. Two weeks into the fall state tournament season, and we have two state champions from North Central Washington. The Okanagan, uh, well, one week after Chelan captured the state 1A volleyball championship, Okanagan girls soccer team claimed the 1B, 2B state title with a 2-0 win over St. George's Saturday. The Bulldogs earned the right to play for the title after a 5-1 win in the semis on Friday over Highland. St. George's also advanced with a 5-1 decision over Kalama. This is Okanagan's third soccer title and first since 2015. Okanagan's football team still alive for the state title after a 55-9 win over Unalaska Saturday in the Apple Bowl. Bulldogs will face PL Willapa Valley in the semis back in the Apple Bowl. That'll be this Saturday at 12 o'clock. Cashmere's football season came to an end in the quarterfinal Saturday against Nooksack Valley. Pioneers erased a 17-14 second half deficit and came away with a 34-24 victory. Cashmere's Trenton Mason threw for 176 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Jack Croce hauling in seven receptions for 109 yards and two scores. He also scored one rushing touchdown in the loss. Royal did advance to the semis with a 41-9 win over Montesano. The Knights will face Freeman Saturday in the semifinals at Moses Lakes Lions Field. That'll kick off at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. The magical ride for Liberty Bell continues after the Mountain Lions dispatched Mossy Rock Saturday. 54-20 the final. Liberty Bell will meet Odessa in the semis. That in Moses Lake as well. That'll kick off at noon. This Saturday, Wenatchee was one set away from reaching the semifinals of the State 4A volleyball tournament in the Sundome Friday. Wasn't to be, however, as the Panthers dropped into the consolation bracket and they fell out on Saturday after a hard fought five set match against Olympia. Graham Compausen was the eventual state champion. Meanwhile, afraid to stay in the 2A tournament, brief after the Tigers fell to Columbia River 3 zip and North Kitsap 3 1, Ellensburg made it to Saturday before falling out. Columbia River won the state 2A title. Washington and Washington. State were both victorious in their lead-up games to the Apple Cup on Saturday. The Cougar defense intercepted former Wazoo quarterback Jaden Delora four times en route to a 31-21 over Arizona. Cameron Ward threw for a touchdown, a rush for another as the Cougars built a 31-6 lead. Wayne Ta-U-La-Papa. I'm sure I got that wrong. And Cameron Davis each rushed for two touchdowns as the Huskies roll up 280 yards on the ground at a 54-7 win against Colorado. The 114th edition of the Apple Cup has been picked up by ESPN and will be played in Pullman Saturday night at 7.30. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? Get ready for the call. Eastern Washington, by the way, won its final game of the season over Northern Colorado, 45-21. Wenatchee Wilder riding a four-game winning streak after a 5-2 win in Cranbrook on Saturday. Wenatchee got goals from Michael Valdez, Luke Wylan, and Micah Berger before Cade Littler scored two of his goals in the third period. Wenatchee, the victory, hit the road again Wednesday. They'll tra face Trail and the Smoke Eaters 7 o'clock on Wednesday night. Seattle Kraken have played three straight overtime games in the NHL and four the second straight time. Seattle came out on top by a score of 3-2, to two, this time over the L.A. Kling, Kings, that is, at Climate Pledge Arena. Brought out by Arthur Kaliev through the middle. Negated by Schultz. Good pass for Everly. He has room. He'll delay. Out in front of Peterson. They score! Shut down by Jones. Seattle can't get out. Flurry, can he? No. Arvidsson. Deneau. They score. Philip Deneau. What a play. Outstanding hand eye by the veteran. Third muckle shoot casino power play of this one. Burakovsky with a shot shielded by Cal Peterson. Phil Deneau. Short handed break in. Trevor Moore. He'll steam in. He'll score. Trevor Moore with a shorthanded goal. Wenberg now to the wall. Veneers. Schultz swings it. Sprong scores! Pick up the phone. It's answer time. 91. That's the call. Daniel Sprong. And the game is tied. Susie sends it in. There's McCann peppered by Callie of Veneers. Darts. Holds on to it. Gets away from OPR. A shot right off the post. McCann moved along. Wenberg. Susie right there. Stopped again by Peterson. Everly lends a helping hand. He comes back to it. Schultz moves it. Here come the Kraken. Two on one. Everly with Tanev. Jordan Everly scores.
How about it? Seattle's off until Wednesday when it will host San Jose at 7 o'clock on Root Sports Northwest. Well, the Rams continued to struggle in NFL action on Sunday. Los Angeles fell on the road in New Orleans 27-20 to drop to 3-7 on the season a year after winning the Super Bowl. San Francisco, Arizona playing right now in Mexico City. That's on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Seahawks back on the field this Sunday against the Raiders at 105 on CBS. Spokane Veterans Memorial, uh, Memorial Arena was absolutely packed to the rafters last night. NCAA Mass, uh, men's basketball, big clash last night. Number two, Gonzaga took on number four, Kentucky, in an early season battle with the Bulldogs coming out on top. 88-72, Drew Timmy led the way with 22 points. He said, nice to bounce back after a tough loss earlier in the week to Texas. Yeah, all-time high. Let me tell you what's not fun is being around this guy after a game <laughs> that we played uh, down in Austin. So uh, easy to be motivated. And um, the one thing about us is, you know, uh, we might screw up, we, but uh, we're going to respond and we're going to bounce back. And I think I think it's a testament to our character, this team's character. While uh, this road may not be perfect, one thing you know is we're going to respond and we're going to come out swinging. So uh, that's a good thing to know. And um, it's just a testament to coach, what he's put in us, and then just how, uh, how we're able to rally as a group. Kentucky coach John Calipari says cutting the Gonzaga lead to four points in the second half was nearly miraculous after a miserable first half. Offensively in the first half, it was so embarrassing um, that we couldn't even run a play. Couldn't run a play. Not one. And it wasn't just Oscar. It was our guards, too. But here's the great thing. We come back and get it to four or five and have our chance to win the game. And that's when I want to see who can step up and make plays. And we, I got to watch the tape and see how, where the breakdowns happened. Because we, that would have been one of the great wins of all time. But I think we only had a few people thinking we were going to win that game. On the women's hardwood Sunday, Haley Van Liss scored 18 points to help sixth-rated Louisville beat third-rated Texas 71-63. That was in the Bahamas. Delea T Daniels led Washington with 12 points as the Huskies topped Idaho State 56-39. Moses Lake's Jamie Loera had nine points to help Eastern Washington beat Evergreen State 90-44. That's sports news. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Coons for a look at what's coming up tomorrow morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thanks, Grant. On the next edition of Wake Up on Angie Valley, the good folks at the Eagles are doing something they've been doing for over a dozen years or close to a dozen years. Thanksgiving dinner right here Thursday afternoon. No questions asked, no charge. Come down, enjoy the com camaraderie. Some really good food. Skinny Bill and regular Bill is going to tell you all about Thanksgiving here at the Eagles on North Wenatchee Avenue. That interview on the next edition of Wake Up on Angie Valley. Grant, back to you. And I do want to remind you before I let you go that we do have a winter weather advisory in place for Tuesday for almost all of north central Washington. We are going to see some snow develop overnight. It could change into freezing rain tomorrow. You could have a very slippery commute as you make your way out the door tomorrow. So please plan for winter driving uh, conditions not only tomorrow morning but into the afternoon. Yeah, we could see about a tenth of ice on the roadways by tomorrow, so be extra careful. And that will do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-NCWL. That's 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for being with us and have a great night. For all the latest news in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020.